Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from yarnandchai.com and this is part one of the mosaic bucket bag crochet pattern. This pattern is originally part of a crochet along and it's divided into three parts. You can find the publishing schedule below and I will link each of the videos there as they are published. The crochet along homepage, which includes the written pattern, is in the description as well, along with a lot of other really helpful information. Before we begin, if you haven't yet watched the Mosaic Bucket Bag Planning Guide video, you'll definitely want to click the link in the description and go back and watch it. That video includes the supply list, and I won't really be getting into those details in this video. This bag is available in two different sizes, classic and mini, and you can follow along with this tutorial regardless of what size you're making. For part one, we'll be making the base of the bag. All you'll need is your chosen hook, I'm using a four millimeter, and the yarn you've chosen to use for color A, the bottom of your bag. Part one is a very detailed video that will help newer crocheters get through the increases of the capsule shaped base. If you're a more experienced crocheter, you might find this video to be a little too detailed and you may prefer to simply work from the written pattern, and that's okay. One last thing before we begin, please take a moment to view the video description. If there have been any changes or error corrections to this pattern since the publishing of this video tutorial, they will be listed in the video description under pattern updates. Let's get started. To start our pattern, we're going to make a slip knot, and this is color A. I'm using I Love This Cotton in the color Aqua. Insert your four millimeter hook and we're going to chain 15. Now it doesn't matter which size bag you're making, the first eight rounds are going to be exactly the same. So for round one, you're going to put three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. Now we don't count the loops on our hook, so this would be the first chain, this is the second. We're going to go into the back loop of that chain and we're going to single crochet three times into that same spot. Then we're going to single crochet one time in each of the next 12 chains. So moving on to the next one, that's one two, you're going to do this 12 times. You should have one chain left. We're going to single crochet three times into that final chain, working around the tail to the other side. And here's what I mean by that. Go ahead and do your first couple into the same spot there. And then for the third and final one, I'm going to turn a little bit and keeping my tail out of the way, I'm going to insert into that same spot again for my third. And what that's done is it's rounded the edge to start us off working down the other side and we've kept the tail out of the way by crocheting over the top of it. Okay, so the next instructions say to work down the other side of the chain single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches and join. So here we go. Okay, so that was my 12th and now I'm going to join to the top of the first single crochet of the round with a slip stitch. These are the top loops of that first stitch that we made. So I'm going to get my hook under those loops and do a slip stitch. And that is the completion of round one. For round two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're gonna single crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. Now I'm going to teach you quickly where I insert my hook for the first stitch and this is going to apply to the entire pattern. Um, in most patterns when you are joining and turning, which doesn't happen too often in crochet, but when you're doing it, you have to decide if you want to start your first stitch of the round right here 
or right here. As long as you're consistent in most patterns, it's not going to make a difference. Um, for our sake, when we get to part three and we're putting in the eyelets, it is going to make a difference. So to make sure that we're consistent, we're gonna do it the same way all together all throughout this pattern. So here's what I do. I chained one, I'm turning my work. The loops on the hook don't count as a stitch. So this, would be our loops created by the chain one, and these would be the loops created when we joined. So loops created by the chain one, loops created when we joined. I don't consider either one of those stitches. So to me, the first true stitch is right here. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. This is from the front. This was the set of loops that was created when we joined and then we chained one, then we turned. Here's the chain one, here's the set of stitches, set of loops created by the join. So this is my first stitch. And I'm going to insert into there, make a single crochet, and I'm going to single crochet in that one, and each of the next 11 for a total of 12 stitches down the side. Okay, that was my 12th stitch, and I'm now going to put two single crochets in each of the next three stitches. So if we can turn this a little bit, we can see our top loops there. I'm gonna put two single crochets, one, two, in each of the next three stitches. So that was the first one, here's the next one. I'm going to put two single crochets into this one. It can feel a little bit tricky when you're working around that bump that's created by the tail that you worked around. Okay, so that's two in that stitch, and then two in the last of that set of three. And now I'm going to put one single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. And now I'm going to put, again, two single crochets in each of the next three stitches. So one, two in the next, one, two in the next, and whoops, one, two in the final stitch of this round. And now I'm going to join to the top loops of the first stitch of the round. Now let me take that join out quickly. If you are a seasoned crocheter, you can probably recognize pretty easily that this was the first single crochet of your round. Um, this right here almost looks like a set of loops, but it's not, and if you tried to get your hook into it, it would be very difficult to do so. Um, that is actually not a stitch. So this is your first true stitch. If that is not obvious to you, I would very highly recommend using stitch markers. I'm going to join with a slip stitch here. I would highly recommend using stitch markers to mark the first and last stitches of each round, or you could probably get away with just marking the first stitch of each, each round. Um, and that's just gonna help you to make sure that you're not adding or missing stitches because you don't recognize um, which stitches are first and which are last. So. Hopefully that will help some of you who are a little bit newer to crochet. Okay, moving on to round three, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to put two single crochets into the first stitch. And again, the loops on the hook do not count. This is our chain one. This is our join. This is our first stitch right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put two single crochets into that one. And then our instructions say one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we have a little repeat here, two single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next. So two in the next, one, two, one in the next. And then we're going to repeat that again a second time. One, two in the next, one in the next. That's the completion of that little repeat there. And now we're going to single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. One, two. Okay, that was my 12th stitch. So now I'm going to 
do a series of repeats three times. We're going to do two single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch and we're going to repeat that three times total. Okay, so two in the next, one, two, and then one in the next. That's one series of repeats. Two in the next, one in the next, that's our second repeat. Two in the next, and one in the next, and that was our third repeat. And the end of this round says single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. And then join to the top of the first single crochet with a slip stitch. So you should have this nice long rounded rectangle or oval, whatever you want to call it, forming. For round four, chain one, turn your work, single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. This is my first stitch. Okay, so that's 12. Now we're going to put two single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and we're going to repeat that series three times total. Okay, so two in the next, then one in each of the next two stitches. So one here, one here. Okay. Let's do that repeat again. Two in the next, one in the next, one in the next, two in the next, one in the next, one in the next. Okay, so we did that series three times and now we are going to single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. Okay, and now we're going to do that same repeat three more times. So two in the next, and then one in each of the next two. That's one time. Two in the next one in each of the next two, that's two times, two in the next, and one in each of the next two, and that should take you to the end of your round. Go ahead and join with a slip stitch. So as you can see, what we're doing here is we are making a circle with a rectangle in the middle. Let me show you what I mean here. And this isn't something that you have to necessarily understand what I'm doing, but for those of you who like to learn from one pattern so that you can apply the concepts to maybe another pattern or even something that you're coming up with on your own, here's what's going on. Basically what we have if we divide this is we have a rectangle in the middle. That's the 12 stitches that we keep doing over and over again and then we have two half circles. So if you were to somehow take this rectangle away, what you would be left with is basically a circle. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. All we are doing is whenever we get to about this part, we start to do a normal circular increase. If you've done a circle increase before, a flat circle base, um, you start with however many um, stitches in say a magic circle and then you do two in each stitch and then you do two one two one two one and then you do two one one two one one two one one around so that's basically what we're doing when we get to this point we increase just like we would for a circle we do it half the amount of times that we would for a circle and then we add 12 stitches for our rectangle and then we finish increasing the circle and then we add 12 stitches for the other side of the rectangle. So, if that did not make any sense to you, don't even worry about it. You don't need to know what's going on in order to follow the pattern. But for those of you who like to know why you're doing what you're doing, um, I think that's a really neat um, concept and it's just a good thing to know. So, 
Okay, so for round five, chain one, turn your work, two single crochets into that first stitch. Oops. And then we are going to single crochet once in each of the next three. So one, two, three. And then two single crochets in the next, single crochet in each of the next three. One, two, three, and then do that one more time. Two single crochet in the next, and then one, two, three. And then single crochet once in each of the next 12 stitches. Okay, our repeat says two single crochets in the next and then one in each of the next three. So one, two, three, and then we are going to do that two more times. Two in the next and then one in each of the next three. two in the next, and then one in the next three. That is the end of that repeat, and to finish off this round, we're going to single crochet once in each of the next 12 stitches. And join with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch of the round. Around six, chain one and turn. Single crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. Two single crochets in the next stitch. And then one in each of the next four. And we're going to do that a total of three times. So two in the next, and then four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Two in the next, and then one, two, three, Four. Single crochet in each of the next 12. Okay, so we're going to do that repeat again three more times. That's two in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in each of the next four. Two in the next one in each of the next four, two in the next, and then one in each of the next four, and that should finish out the round. And join with a slip stitch. For round seven, we're going to chain one and turn. Two single crochets in the first stitch, and then one single crochet in each of the next five stitches, and that's our repeat for this round. Two in the next, one in each of the next five, two in the next, and one in each of the next five. Okay. 
And we're going to single crochet once in each of the next 12 stitches. And we're going to do our repeats again, two in the next stitch and one in each of the next five. Two in the next. One in each of the next five. Two in the next. One in each of the next five. And then single crochet in each of the next 12 to finish off the round. And slip stitch to join. Chain one and turn for round eight. Round eight is going to be the last uh, base round for the mini sized bag. And then we'll continue on making the classic bag just a little bit bigger before we join up together again. So single crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. This is round eight. Two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in each of the next six stitches. And that's our repeat for this round. So we're going to do that three total times. Single crochet twice in the next one, and then once in each of the next six. Twice in the next. Once in each of the next six. And then single crochet in each of the next 12. Two in the next. And do our repeat again. And then one in each of the next six. Two in the next. One in each of the next six. Two in the next, and one in each of the next six to finish out the round. Okay, if you are working on the mini bag, do not join here. If you're working on the classic size, you can go ahead and join. And we are going to move on to round nine. So those of you who are working on the mini size right now, you are not going to do anything for the next four rounds that I demonstrate. And you will pick back up when the classic size is at uh, round 13, which will be round nine for you. So you can go ahead and fast forward the video a little bit until you see on um, the side of the screen, the mini size is on round 13, and that is where we're going to pick back up. Okay, so for those of you working on the classic size bag for round 9, we're going to chain 1 and turn our work. And continuing on with the increases that we've been doing, we're going to put two single crochets into the first stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next seven. Two 
two in the next, one in each of the next seven. Two in the next, and one in each of the next seven. And we're going to single crochet in each of the next twelve. two single crochet in the next and single crochet in each of the next seven. Let's do our repeats again. Two in the next one in each of the next seven. Two in the next. One in each of the next seven. And then one in each of the next 12 to finish out the round. and join with a slip stitch. Okay, round 10, chain one and turn. Again, this is for the classic size only. Single crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. Two single crochets in the next stitch and single crochet in each of the next eight stitches and that is our repeat for this round. Two in the next one in each of the next eight two in the next one in each of the next eight And we're going to do our set of 12. One single crochet in each of the next 12. Okay, back to our repeats. Two in the next, and then one in each of the next eight. two in the next, 
one in each of the next eight. Two in the next. And one in each of the next eight. And that finishes off the round, so go ahead and join with a slip stitch. For round 11, chain one and turn, two single crochets in the first stitch, and one single crochet in each of the next nine. And we're going to do that two more times. Two single crochet in the next, one in each of the next nine. Two single crochets in the next. Oops. And one in each of the next nine. Single crochet in each of the next 12. And then back to our repeats. Two in the next stitch, and then one in each of the next nine. Two in the next stitch, and then one in each of the next nine. Two in the next, and one in each of the next nine. And then we're going to single crochet in each of the remaining twelve and join with a slip stitch. Okay, round 12. This is the final round of increase for the classic sized bag. We're gonna start by single crocheting in each of the first 12 stitches. Then we're going to put two single crochets in the next and single crochet once in each of the next 10 stitches for our repeat. Two in the next, 
one in each of the next 10. Two in the next. And one in each of the next 10. Okay, and now our sequence of 12, single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. Two in the next, starting our repeat again, and then one in each of the next 10. Two in the next, and one in each of the next ten again. Got caught there. Two in the next, and then one in each of the remaining ten to finish out the round. Okay, so I've just finished round 12 and I am not joining with a slip stitch here. So whether you are doing the classic size bag or the mini size bag, you should have a complete base here. The mini will just be a few rows, uh, rounds smaller. But either way, you're sitting in the same position here with um, you've just finished your final increase round and you are not joining. And from this point forward, um, for most of the rest of the bag, we're going to be working in a seamless spiral, which means that we are not going to be joining at the end of rounds or chaining up. We're just going to be single crocheting round and round and round um, to make the body of our bag. So what I want you to do is grab a stitch marker because you're going to need it to keep track of the first stitch of your rounds. Okay, so this is round nine if you're working on the mini version and round 13 if you're working on the classic version. And all we're going to be doing now is single crocheting around in each stitch. So what I want you to do is um, locate that stitch where we would have joined if we had joined the last round that we did. So this is the first stitch of the round that we just did. This is where we would have joined. And instead of joining, I want you to do a single crochet. This is your first single crochet of this round. Again, round 13 on the large bag, classic bag, and round nine on the mini. So go ahead and put your stitch marker in there. I just like to use a bobby pin because it stays put real good. So that's your first single crochet and then you're going to continue to single crochet all the way around. And you are going to do this for the classic size bag for 10 rounds total. So that would be rounds 13 
through 22. You're just going to single crochet around and around. That would be rounds 9 through 15 for the mini size. You're only going to do 7 rounds of only single crochet all the way around, okay? So, classic sized, do this 10 times. Mini sized, do this 7 times. When you get back around this first time, this is going to be the last stitch of the round. And instead of joining or chaining to anything, you're just going to move right on to put your first stitch of the next round in this area marked with um, the stitch marker. So let me move ahead to the end of this first round of single crochets so that I can show you exactly what I'm talking about, just in case you've never done a seamless spiral before. Okay, so I've just come around to the end of round 13 or 9 if you're working on the mini and I'm just going to finish up these last couple of stitches. This is my last stitch of this round and now I'm going to take my stitch marker out of the next stitch and I'm just going to go right ahead and start round 14 or this is round 10 for the mini size and I'm just going to keep single crocheting. I'm going to do that one. I'm stick my stitch marker back in there because I know that this is the first stitch of the next round and I'm just going to continue to single crochet around. So you're just going to do this for the number of rows on the size of the pattern that you are making and then when we are done with all of these rounds of single crochet we will meet back together. Okay, so I just finished round 22, and that's round 15 if you're doing the mini-sized bag. And what you should have is your flat oval base and this wall that's starting to build up the sides. And this is actually the end of part one. For part two, we are going to change colors and start working on the mosaic parts of the body of our bag. And you can check the video information below to see if part two is available yet. And if it's not, there is a complete schedule listed in the information. You can find out exactly when that's going to be available. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more easy, modern patterns from Yarn and Chai.